Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Political Vigilante. You're making Gotham great again. So I wanted to talk about um, a little-known piece of history about uh, Fred Hampton, who I just learned about actually through Chris Hedges, who was the head of the Black Panther Party and started to bring together what he called a rainbow coalition of poor whites and poor black, poor Latino, was bringing them together. Weird, we don't study this guy. The only, the only view we have of the Black Panthers, they were militant black people. They're bad. Anytime people start getting together, crossing the identity politic labels, that's a threat to the powerful. This is an article from theconversation.com. It's in the show notes below. In Chicago in 1969, when Black Panthers aligned with Confederate flag-wielding working-class whites. I didn't know this, man. I'm from Chicago. I did not know this. They didn't teach it in our schools. Chicago in the 60s was a brutal place for poor people. Black, brown, and white people of all dealt with poverty, unemployment, police violence, substandard housing, inadequate schools, and a lack of social services. Ethnic and racial groups each created their own social service and activist networks to combat every kind of oppression. It's like when Malcolm X started aligning more with Dr. King, when Malcolm X went to Mecca and said, oh, wow, he realized, like, if you read his book, that race, he goes, race is an American thing. He went to Mecca and he goes, he talks about, I was, I was with Muslims who were white, European, all different ethnicities, and we were all together on our spiritual journey. Took him out. We've talked about this before. Dr. King, how come we don't see Dr. King's socialist speeches talking about the ills of capitalism and why are we spending money overseas on a war in Vietnam when there's poor people here in America? That's weird. Bobby Kennedy said the same thing. Weird. MLK and Kennedy were killed within two months of each other. Mar Malcolm X starts coming around the peace, the unity. Malcolm X was, was uh, yeah, they were threatened by him a little bit, but he was very useful. Malcolm X killed by, his, by uh, other black Muslims. One of these groups was the Young Patriot Organization, which was based in Hillbilly Harlem. <laughs> I did not know this was a neighborhood nickname in Chicago. An uptown neighborhood of Chicago populated by displaced white Southerners. To give you quick history lessons of Chicago, so after the Civil War, and Reconstruction, many Southerners, black and white, came to the North for industrial. The Industrial Revolution was starting. That's why Chicago was called the hog butcher to the world. There was all these industrial jobs. It's also why Chicago blues is really Mississippi Delta, Southern blues that came and created this new, new unique sound. But there were poor whites that came up too. In a neighborhood, now I'm, I'm learning with you guys, Hillbilly Harlem populated by displaced white Southerners. Many YPO members were racist and they flaunted controversial symbols associated with Southern pride, such as the Confederate flag. But like blacks and Latinos, the white young patriots and their families experienced discrimination in Chicago. In their case, it was because they were poor and from the South. And this is a thing, and Hedges talks about it in his new book, and he talked about it on his Jimmy Dore interview, but um, the, that's the thing that the left has done so much of is the educated liberals have always looked their nose down on like working class whites. So they feel, dis they feel ostracized. You know, working class whites and blacks went and fought in Vietnam. The rich kids protested, which was good. I'm glad they were doing that, but they could go to college, which means you got a deferment from the draft. So families that could afford to send kids to college, their kid didn't have to go to war. The working class and the poor had to go fight the war. In his short time as Black Panther leader, Fred Hampton wanted to advance the group's goals by forming a rainbow coalition of working class poor people of all races. He knew it, it was class warfare. That they used racism 
as a me capitalist use racism as a tool for capitalism. Again, we talk about this a lot, keeping everybody divided. If we keep everybody divided, black, white, red state, blue state, liberal, conservative, men, women, we keep everybody divided, well then no one's challenging the powerful. When people on the left are blaming Susan Sarandon for Trump, they're winning. The powerful elite, they got us, they got us, they got us. People are calling, you know, I voted for Jill Stein, who's a Kremlin puppet, so I, it's my fault. They're loving it. The left is fighting with each other. People are calling Jimmy Dore a, 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 a useful idiot for Trump. That's great. Yeah, don't attack the real power. Don't, they don't want us together. They don't want us banding together. They don't want, they don't want, you know, Confederate, Confederate flag waving whites and Black Lives Matter <laughs> African Americans both watching this show and agreeing. They don't want that. They don't want that. They don't want that. Assumed to be natural enemy, enemies, these groups and their calls for economic justice, they united in their calls for economic justice. In the, in the August 9th issue of the Black Panther newspaper, the party's chief of staff, David Hillard, admiringly called the young patriots the only revolutionaries we respect that ever came out of the mother country. Recalling his work with the, w, the YPO, former Black Panther Bobby Lee explained that the Rainbow Coalition was just a code word for class struggle. Look at this photo. Black Panther flag, Confederate flag. One of the things that happened was many of these working whites that were, you know, using racist symbols started to realize, oh, this ain't right. We shouldn't be racist. They were like, oh, capitalism made us racist. Capitalism keeps us divided. That's what they do. I mean, Trump type tap tapped into this. He tapped into the disenfranchised working whites. Now, and, and said, I hear you, I get you. Now he used all this and is using all this awful racist jingoism. The Muslims are taking your job. The Mexicans are rapists and taking your jobs. We need to build a wall, that awful shit. But he tapped into that. There was a, a city, Anderson, Indiana, that Hedges talks about in his uh, new book, America the Fel Farewell Tour, where he's like, there was a plant a GM plant, they shipped all the jobs away to Mexico where they're paying Mexicans $3 an hour, no health insurance, <laughs> which is awful. So they're exploiting workers in Mexico and it was, a, it was union jobs. People were getting anywhere from $20 to $35 an hour, full union benefits to towns of ghost town. They voted for Bernie in the primary because there was no way they were gonna vote for Hillary because Bill Clinton shipped their jobs away with NAFTA a thing she championed in the press. And this is the thing that like the, the neoliberals don't, don't get. They don't get it. And then they just say, well, these Southern whites are dumb. They're dumb hillbillies. But if you say, oh, well, these are dumb inner city blacks, you're racist. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not supporting, I don't like this flag. I don't think we need it anymore. <laughs> it's a symbol of racist. I'm not supporting racist, but do, do you see that mentality? And they're getting unified because it's class struggle. That's the, 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 the identity politics is a useful tool of the powerful elite to keep us divided. See what happens? You know? And then what happened? So let's go back real quick. August 9th, 1969, right? They united, these groups united. This is a quote from the Black Panther newspaper. They united in August of 1969. We had this happen. Guess what happened? You wanna take a guess what happened to Fred Hampton? You wanna know why you haven't heard of Fred Hampton? Because at 5 a.m. on December 4th, 1969, 14 police officers raided Hampton's apartment, which was a known Illinois Black Panther Party stronghold in Chicago's west side according to the Chicago Tribune. The gunfire lasted seven minutes and Hampton and Clark were shot dead while sleeping. 
The Black Panthers fired one shot. The cops and the FBI fired between 80 to 89 shots. It was a complete setup. Because we need to keep the Black Panthers violent, scary. Hey, white America, they're coming for you. Wait a minute, white America. Maybe you're all getting fucked the same way. And here's the real reason. This is the real reason. Here is a speech from Fred Hampton. Understand the Black Panther Party's uh, relationship with white mother country radicals. A lot of people don't even understand that word that they're refusing a lot. But what we're saying is that there are white people in the mother country that are for the same types of things that we are for stimulating revolution in the, in the mother country. And we said that we would work with anybody and form coalition with anybody that has revolution on their mind. We're not a racist organization because we understand that racism is an excuse used for capitalism. And we know that racism is just, it's, it's a byproduct of capitalism. Everything would be all right if everything was put back in the hands of the people. And we're going to have to put it back in the hands of the people. Everybody in the state of Illinois is going to have to be involved or even around the revolution because we're going to have one. And we're going to have to, we're going to, have to do more than talk. We're going to have to do more than listen. We're going to even have to do more than learn. We're going to have to start practicing, and that's very hard. We're going to have to start getting out there with the people. And a lot of times we think we're better than the people. That's an insult, and that's criminal. It's going to take a lot of hard work. Come on in, little brother. Come on in, little sister. Y'all can sit down and get something to eat. Sisters and brothers. Y'all take off y'all's coat. We need some more stuff out here, so that video goes on just to show a lot of the work what the Black Panthers were doing. They were feeding people in their neighborhood, protecting people, and that's what this other organization, the YPO, was. If we go back and watch that video, the, when the speech that he's giving initially, there's all different types of people in the audience. There's, there's transcripts of his speeches where it says that these white, like, Confederate flag people were, like, cheering at Fred, ha Fred Hampton. He said the Black Panther Party is not a racist party. He said racism is used by capitalism. Didn't know that. Late, I'm in my late 40s. I didn't know about this guy. Deliberately scrubbed from our history books. I knew about the Black Panther Party, but only in the way that the the corporate power structure, the corporate media told me, oh, they were dangerous. Yeah, they fought with the cops. Cops said, we're going to come get you. And they said, no, you're not. Were there people within the Black Panther Party that, were, that wanted to, to have an armed revolution? Yeah, probably. Do I agree with an armed revolution? No. But look what happens when people unite. Four months after they had this rainbow coalition, he was killed. And of course they use that age old thing. Oh, we had no choice. We had no choice. Started shooting at us. So folks, I just want to bring you the information that nobody else is bringing you. And this is what we can do today. We need to unite with people who maybe ideologically we don't agree with, maybe have ideas that we find distasteful, but capitalism has created this racism. Capitalism has done this. It pits us against each other, fighting for jobs and the meager wages that the imperialists hand out to us. Trump and Bernie both tied into a populist message. This is how we have to, we have to unite across these lines. We have to. And I've said this time and time again. You give people $15 an hour, you give them free health care, you give them college tuition, you wipe out student loan forgiveness, you give them a chance at a hope and, and a good life, they're going to soften on their, on their racist ideas. They'll soften on them. And you start giving everybody working together you, you, you'll start to, will there be, will that cure racism? No, but it'll minimize it. 
In Yugoslavia, it was an ec in the 80s, it was an economic collapse. Not age-old uh, rivalries between ethnic groups. It was an economic collapse in the late 80s that brought upon all of the horrible shit that happened in the 90s. And we're on the precipice of that here. And when liberal institutions like the courts and the media and all these things that are supposed to be watchdogs become guard dogs for power, then a demagogue like Trump pops up there. stimulating revolution in the, in the mother country. And we said that we would work with anybody and form coalition with anybody that has revolution on their mind. And we're not a racist organization because we understand that racism is an excuse used for capitalism. And we know that racism is just, it's, it's a byproduct of capitalism. It racism is a byproduct of capitalism. Guys, thank you for watching the show. Thank you for helping make Gotham great again. Progressive Comedy Tour, November 2nd and 3rd, Sacramento and San Francisco with Ron Placone. And January 9 through 12 in Florida. Go to GrahamElwood.com for all my tour dates. And also, please subscribe. Even if you already have, click the bell button to get notifications. It's the best way we can do this. Watch the ads all the way through. Don't click, when you click skip ad, I don't get paid. Watch the ads all the way through, even if it's some crazy right-wing bullshit, because then we're kind of robbing hooding their money, because then they're paying me their right-wing money. Isn't that great? <laughs> Go to the Patreon to support it. There's bonus content, all great stuff you get. Thanks for watching the show, and thank you for making Gotham great again.